Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video and another plug side chat. So Electrify America finally released their new uh, pricing structure and their new app. Not a big surprise, they sort of teased what it was going to be, but it's finally released right now. And I don't really want to go over the details of it necessarily in this video. Uh, I'm going to put a link below to Jeff at Electric Revs, his uh, article that goes over it. It's a pretty thorough article breaking down the pricing structure and what you can expect from it. But I wanted to talk more about the response that I've seen, uh, in particular the negative response that I've seen to Electrify America's new pricing tiers. And I want to present sort of a counter argument to that because what I'm hearing is that electric vehicle chargers should always charge strictly by the kilowatt hour and anything else is the equivalent of highway robbery or whatever um, and i just don't buy that and part of the reason for it is i think we need to understand that dc fast charging for electric vehicles it's not selling electricity as a product or a commodity it's providing a service and what you pay will depend on the service that's being provided. So while it might appear that a fee structure that's based on a permanent charging session is unfair to slower charging vehicles, that's kind of actually the purpose. See, the purpose of these chargers is to allow you to charge more quickly and get back on the road again in a timely manner. Now, electric vehicles, especially smaller battery electric vehicles that charge slower, uh, or electric vehicles that are trying to eke every little bit of range out and charging up to 85, 90, 95, or 100 percent, their charge rate slows down significantly. And if there's no punishment for that, in terms of a monetary fee, basically, you're going to have people dwelling at these chargers for far longer than is appropriate. And again, the service that's being provided by Electrify America, it means that in my Bolt EV, before it was a decision of, do I pay more at an Electrify America charger to save five to 10 minutes over maybe 15 minutes over using a slower DC fast charger or do I go for the DC fast charger that's cheaper to use for a slower charging vehicle well I value my time so I'll usually defer to the faster charger well now electrify America's pricing plan accounts for vehicles that charge a little bit slower, charge at an average pace, and charge extremely fast. And, you know, I think you could argue either way about the actual levels and where they sort of did their arbitrary cutoffs. And I don't think they're necessarily appropriate. And I also don't think that they necessarily favor VW vehicles. Actually, the vehicle that gets affected uh, most negatively by their pricing structure is the Audi e-tron because it charges barely above that 125 kilowatt charging rate, yet it's pushed into the highest priced bracket. So, you know, it's not as though uh, Electrify America is somehow favoring VW vehicles in this. And again, like I said, the arguments I hear is, oh, well, you don't go to a gas station and pay by the rate at which you pump gasoline, you pay per unit. Well, that's true. But part of the reason that gas stations can't charge you for sitting there and dwelling and parking in front of a uh, gas pump is they have no way of assessing that fee. If they could, they probably would. If you've ever been to a busy travel center along a highway where there are a lot of cars, people trying to fuel up for a long vacation or whatever, they're actively on the PA telling people to move their cars if they're done pumping gasoline. They have no other way of dissuading people from doing it because there's no connection to the car being there and pumping gas. Electric vehicle charging changes that. 
So you can say, hey, look, we don't want you sitting here parked for longer than 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. And if you are, we're going to find a way to assess a fee that prevents you from staying here longer than that. And it's baked into the cost of a permanent charge. This is what allows Electrify America to service far more vehicles than they would if they were charging on a per kilowatt hour basis. And I think that's a good thing. And as far as that analogy of gas pumps go, well, again, DC fast charging is a service, right? So you're paying for a service. You don't go to a full service gas station and pay the same per gallon as you do at a self-service gas station. But even then, that analogy isn't really appropriate. These DC fast chargers work more like broadband, right? You pay more if you're going to get a higher bandwidth. And you don't get to say, well, I'm only using a quarter of the bandwidth, so I should only have to pay a quarter of what someone else on my plan pays. You don't get to say that. You're paying for the access, not for the amount you're actually using. Again, it's a service, not a commodity, not a product. And so if your vehicle can't charge fast enough to warrant using these chargers, yes, one option is you have to change out your vehicle. Another option is you just don't use those chargers and you find a different charging provider that actually provides a service that you prefer. But again, the idea is that as consumers, we should have a choice and the charging providers should be free to set their pricing model in whatever way works best for their customers. And this pricing model for Electrify America works really well for me, works really well for a number of Bolt EV owners, Kona Electric owners, Nero EV owners. It works well for a lot of these newer vehicles that are coming online that can take advantage of those faster charging rates. So we can be in and out in a half hour instead of 45 minutes to an hour. And we're not waiting for people who are going to be there for an hour or an hour and a half trying to eke out every last kilowatt hour they can get. And so again, my point in this isn't saying one way is better than another. Simply, we need to allow the charging providers the choice to set up their pricing structure the way they feel best supports their customers. Doing anything else, in my opinion, actually hurts electric vehicle adoption and actually hurts consumers. So forcing them to charge by the kilowatt hour is just as bad as forcing them to charge on a time-based fee structure. So that's my opinion on it. You know, you could probably tell I'm fairly opinionated about this, but I do think that we could see real harm done to electric vehicle adoption if Electrify America is forced to charge by the kilowatt hour. And you'll see a lot of these charging providers probably try to find a way around it. I mean, what's to stop them based on that other model, say Electrify America charges a penny per kilowatt hour, but it's a 25 cent per minute parking fee. Well, it's the same thing at that point. It's just they've found a different way to structure it and they've been forced to structure it that way to get around a law or a regulation that is basically bad for the consumer. So I'd love to hear what you think. Do you think time-based charging fees work better for you? Do you think that per kilowatt hour based fees work better for you? Uh, and do you agree with me that we should see a mixture and that charging providers should be able to use whichever fee structure works, works best for their customers? If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel. And thank you for watching.